In this session, we'll look at how to simulate a non-rectangular image capture. I am using Civil 3D 2016, although this technique will work in 2015 as well. I have a drawing open on screen. This drawing does not have any geometry displaying. The drawing is geo-referenced. I'm going to come down to the end of the ribbon, turn on the geolocation tab, and then in the online map panel, I'll open the map menu and I'll choose map aerial to turn on the aerial photograph. Let's say that I'm interested in the area of this roadway. I would like to capture the aerial photograph in this area. If I hover over the Capture Area tool, we can see that I am restricted to a rectangular selection. So to select the photograph, I'm going to be grabbing a great big area. In this case, I'd like my selection to be more focused on the roadway itself. Since I'm not able to extract imagery using a polygon, I'm going to simulate the shape by making multiple captures. I'm going to start by creating a rectangle. I'll go to the Home tab and I'll launch the Rectangle command. And then I'm going to create a rectangle that roughly represents the size of my viewport. I will then scale this object. Let me launch the Scale command. I'll select the rectangle and I'll press Enter. I'll pick a point here in the middle of the screen and let's use a scale factor of 0.25 and I'll press Enter. Now let's move this into position. I'll launch the Move command. I'll select that and I'll move it up to the end of the roadway, and then we'll launch the Rotate command. I'll select this object and we'll rotate it to line up with the street. Basically, I'm using this rectangle to define the areas where I'd like to capture imagery. Let's make a couple copies. I'll launch the Copy command, and I'll copy this rectangle to here, and I'll make another one here at the end. I'll press Escape. Now I'm creating these objects using the rectangle command and making copies. You could also possibly use the view frames tool, or you could create blocks and insert them along the length of an alignment using the measure command, possibly. Let me rotate these last couple objects. I'll select this one and we'll rotate it into position. And then I'll select this one and we'll rotate this one into position. Maybe I'll move this over a little too. So these rectangles represent the areas where I'd like to capture imagery. The next thing I'm going to do is rotate my UCS. That's because your image capture is based on your XY axis. I'm going to do that by typing UCS, and then I'm going to come down and select the Object option. I will then hover next to this rectangle. You can see how the UCS will be aligned to that object. Let me click. After I've rotated the UCS, I'm going to type Plan, and I'll press Enter twice. This will square up the coordinate system with my view. I can now zoom in and center my view on this rectangle. Let's go back to the Geolocation tab, and then I'll open the Capture menu and I'll choose Capture Viewport. There we go, let me pan this over. I'm going to relaunch UCS, Object, I'll hit this object, I'll type Plan and press Enter twice. We'll zoom in and focus on this view. Once again, I'll capture the viewport. Let's do it again, UCS, Object, we'll do this last one, Plan, Enter, Enter, and I'll zoom in and we'll capture. When I'm finished, I no longer need the rectangles, so I'm going to select one of these. I'll right-click and choose Select Similar from the menu, and then I'll press Delete to remove all of them from the file. Let's back up. We can now see the areas where we've captured imagery. The next thing we'll do is set our UCS and View back to its original settings. I'll do that by typing UCS, and I'll press Enter twice. This puts me back to the World Coordinate System. I will then type Plan and press Enter twice to square up the coordinate system with my view. At this point, I no longer need to see the large aerial photo, so let me go back to the Map menu, and I will turn that off. Let's do one more thing. You can see that the image boundary is displaying on each of these images. This geometry represents the current layer. To hide this, I can use the system variable image frame. If I set that to zero, this boundary will no longer display, nor will it plot. If I zoom in, the image takes on a continuous appearance. Now even though that boundary is hidden, I can still select these objects by clicking on the edge. And even though they are separate objects, I can still edit them as a team. If I select all three of these, I can come up and change the resolution if I want from optimal to very fine. Or I could come back. When I'm finished, I am now ready to incorporate this imagery into any plan sheets or exhibits.